All right, fam. So we are back with another crazy, crazy video. Now, this one right here, this was a very, very good conversation. And man, this is a black. This is black liberals versus black conservatives. But the the first question that they asked, bro, this is where I want just to just to make this whole video about. Okay, I want to make this whole video about the first question they debated about. So without further ado, hit the like button, subscribe to on post notifications. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm not even sure where the timer is, <laughs> um, but uh, we are going to, I'm just going to start with this first question, um, and I'll start on this side, but whoever wants to go first, feel free. What, in your opinion, is the most significant challenge facing black Americans today, and how does it impact society? Um, I would have to say... I mean, we can, we can go into father absence and all this type of stuff, which is a big issue. I think it's our lack of adherence to the Word of God, mm. ultimately, what it boils down out to. The gate. You know what I'm saying? Out the gate, out the gate. Yes, indeed. Let's start off with the Word of God. Why not? <clears throat> the Bible says clearly, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. That's what we're called to do as people, wow. okay? And the very fact that we're not adhering to the Word of God, the very fact that we're being wise in our own eyes, the very fact that we're not shunning evil, the very fact that we have our egos and our pride in the way of everything that it is that we're trying to do, it derails us every time, right? Especially when it comes to the Word of God. The Word of God says don't be promiscuous, right? Do not have sex outside of wedlock, okay? That's what the Bible says. So when we start having sex outside of wedlock and start having children, right? And then we wonder around, oh, what happened? Well, you're not adhering to the word of God. And then what do we do as a result of that? We don't, we go, especially within the black community, we go and start murdering our children at will en masse, right? When the Bible clearly says, thou shalt not murder, okay? I mean, we can go on down the list, be equally yoked. The Bible talks about not being unequally yoked with non-believers, but yet and still. Oh, shorty, bad. I got to holler at shorty. You know what I'm saying? And then they end up getting with this chick, right? Thank you, Stephen. Have a child out of wedlock. It all goes bad. And now we have fatherless homes, right? So if we just adhere to the word of God, Thank we would be all right. I, I, I must say that. I appreciate that. Boy, I don't they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Fam, that was, just, bro, he explained that perfectly. What then? What? What? How much time did he have? Like what? That was like six minutes, maybe. Not maybe not even six minutes. But bro, that was explained so perfectly. That's one of the biggest issues we have in the black community. One of the biggest issues. Man, hold on, bro. I got it. I got to hear what the. I got to hear what the girl go say, bro. Cause he just. Oh man. Woo. I don't have an official timer, by the way, so if you guys can just My bad. your point, get your, you were, listen, you were going in, okay, but that's a warm-up. Uh, your response? Oh, same question? Same question. Ooh. Um, dang, you pretty much took my, my part. Um, so, well, since you did the number one, I would say the number two is um, the idea that there is this systemic oppression and systemic racism that is oh. keeping us down. So we have this boogeyman that we have to blame for every single thing going wrong in our lives, which requires us to not take accountability, not take responsibility for the choices and the decisions that we make as free people. Because nowadays we see that there is literally nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you, you, there's nobody you can't be with. There is no job that you can't have. There's no business that you cannot start. You literally can do whatever you want to do. So if we're being honest, it's a, now we're living in this time, in this era where we're talking about it being more of a mental slavery instead of uh, the slavery that our ancestors experienced. Now we're being complicit in our own slavery, celebrating the very things that keep us down. Stripper culture, uh, hip hop, the way hip hop is right now is mad crazy. The fact that we, we, are, we have gotten completely comfortable seeing our men dressed up in skirts and dresses and lipstick and nail polish and all this, being traipsed around on the red carpet, every single opportunity that the culture has and none of us are speaking out against it. And let's not even begin to talk about how they 
have, and I'm, when I say they, I'm talking about those okay, in power wrap it up. have kept us in the mental slavery of uh, simply tricking us into believing that uh, we don't get to say anything, we have to do what they say in order, for they to, in order for them to give us what we want, and when in actuality we can take what we want whenever we want to. So. Okay, thank you. Bro, bro, fam, I have no words. Dogs, they just went off. They, now, like I said, this is black liberals versus black conservatives, so this is definitely the conservative side. This is definitely the conservative side, but they both just went off. They, oh my gosh, bro. She hit, she hit on something I've been saying for years now, bro, about the victim mindset, not having the victim mindset, knowing that you can do anything, knowing that no one stops you from doing nothing. The only person that stops you from doing what it is that you want to do is you. You are your biggest enemy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only person that can stop you from achieving the goals that you that you want to achieve in this life. No, no, no so-called white man. I like what she said, the boogeyman. Because I'm still trying to figure out to this day who the freak is the white man. And what authority do this white man have over my life? Who is the white man? You know what I'm saying? People say that Christianity is the white man religion. It's not. If you really do your research, you would know that it didn't come from white people. I'm just saying. But it, it, regardless of the race... You know what I'm saying? These are facts. These are, even in the Bible, these are biblical principles that we should live by. See, people look at the Bible, oh, it's man, man, it's filled with so much wisdom, so much knowledge. If you just, if you just, like, just heave to it, if you just really read it, meditate on it day and night, as Joshua 1 8 tells us, bro, it could change your life. It will change your perspective. That victim mindset that you have, that mindset will change. It will shift. It will shift. You will start to understand, like, dang, hold on. I'm in control of my life. I'm in control of my life. I I can go left or right. If God tells me to go right, I still have the free will to go left. But yet, because I love God, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the way He wants me to go. But at the end of the day, you still have that free will to choose. I'm I'm gonna let the black uh the black liberal speak because I I really want to see what they go say to that. It's no way. It's no way they can debate that, bro. No way. Thank you for that. All right, this side, who wants to go first? I'll go, I'll go first. Good evening, Detroit. What up, though? Yeah, I had to bring out my buffs for, for Detroit, man, yeah. Um, that's simple. I'll be quick. I'll be brief. I ain't going to hold you too long. You heard me. Um, the number one challenge for the black community is the wage gap. Black people make 63 to 75 cents on the dollar to their white counterparts. It's all about economics. And I'll pass it to Mrs. Marie Mont. I would also have to piggyback on that, that it is a, a vast economic issue for African Americans. Uh, I think it's interesting that we're talking about history when we just had the last living survivor of the Tulsa race massacre not get any reparations for the fact that her community was bombed to the ground by white people. And that was not a one-time event that happened in Wilmington, North Carolina, that happened in Opelousas, Louisiana, that happened all across the nation. Um, you, when you think about, um, I'm into public policy, that's what I went to Harvard for, uh, municipal, county, state legislatures are governed by a budget. And so when we're talking about transportation, when we're talking about education, when we're talking about housing, all of that has to do with dollars. Where are dollars going and who are those dollars going to? And so when I see people in my community struggling, primarily that is because they don't have economic opportunities. They don't have the ability to be able to have those tax dollars come back into their community and go into things like education and proper transportation and workforce development and economic development. I'm not into the culture wars. I'm into public policy, which is dollars and legislative decisions. Thank you so much. All right. So okay. Okay. Hold, hold, hold the front door. She lost me when she said she went to Harvard. And then she started saying all that extra stuff. Oh, my gosh. Economics are the issue, but yet liberals vote for economic or they keep voting, voting for economic disasters. So, I'm, oh, see, this is why I, I, I just don't understand. I, 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 don't understand the, I don't understand the mindset of a liberal. See, I try to get into the mind 
of a of a liberal of a left of a leftist. I just can't. The thing with the the thing with the black community is that we want to continue to be the victim of our own doings. Like we will get ourselves in a predicament and we will blame it on the white man and we just will we will blame everything on other people instead of taking accountability for our own actions and and saying, "Okay, this is what I need to go better at. This is what I need to do. This is what I need to do in order to achieve what I want to achieve in this life. You know what I'm saying? Because again, you continue to have that victim mindset. You will never get nowhere in life. If you always just think that you are the victim of something, you would get, you wouldn't, you won't get nowhere in life. Like you just won't bro. You have to take off that victim mindset economics. Like, bro, are you serious? What? Like I, I'm just throwing off. Like, and then a dude in a black and yellow shirt, he just thought he did something. He, oh, I'm going to make this quick and simple for y'all. It's economics. All right, I'm going to pass it over to her. Like, bro, you didn't say nothing. You didn't do nothing, bro. You are, you just a waste of space at this point. You shouldn't even be in this debate. Because how in the world can you even say something like that, bro? I'm, I'm like, so, I'm like, so lost on the whole economic thing. Like, I'm so confused and so lost on that issue, bro. How, that's an issue for us? That, is that an issue for black people? Please let me know. L let me know something. You know what I'm saying? But my whole thoughts on this whole situation is that I agree with what the conservatives were saying. I believe that the issue is that, number one, we don't keep God first. And people say, oh, keep God first. And then when they say keep God first, they just put it in their bio. It's just a it's just a, a saying that, that just gives aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? It's an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic thing. Oh, keep God first. That's an aesthetic to people, but it should be a lifestyle. You should take in God's word, place it in your heart, place it so deep in your heart that you may not sin against God, that you actually may follow the word of God. You may live by the word of God and you will start to see how things start to change. The Bible tells, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by the word of God. This is how you can get out of that victim mindset by renewing your mind by the word of God. When you start to see the things that God says about you, when you start to see the things that God says about what's to come, you will start to see that, oh, okay, this is the, the way that these liberals think. This is not what God is saying. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, man, I'm going to go ahead and get off this video. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this comment. I'm mean, well, Y'all let me know what y'all think about this topic in, it, um, in the comment section below. Let's have a discussion, man. Let's have a true discussion. You know what I'm saying? Keep it safe. You know what I'm saying? Keep it child friendly. I know a lot of y'all be cussing like sailors out here, man. Keep it child friendly in the comments, okay? So, yeah, let's just have this conversation because I really want to know what do y'all think the biggest issue with black folks, even if you're a white person, bro. You know what I'm saying? Tag along in that. You feel me? What do you think? What have you seen? In the black culture that you see that is a big issue. You know what I'm saying? I know you may not be black, but pretty sure you done seen black folks before. So I want to know, or even on the internet, what do you think is the biggest issue? You know what I'm saying? What do you think is the biggest issue? Y'all let me know this in the comment section below. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, be your boy depend. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.